This is the video lesson for Snell's Law. The learning target for this lesson is, I am learning to apply Snell's Law to determine the angles of incidence and refraction when light waves move from one medium to another. The success criteria for this lesson are, I can identify when light, la light waves refract, I can define Snell's Law, and I can find the angles of incidence and refraction of light waves using Snell's Law. Let's talk for a minute about the refraction of light waves. So all waves refract, regardless of the type of wave they are. Water waves, light waves, sound waves, all waves refract. So refraction occurs when waves change media. So when they go from one medium to the next, that's when refraction occurs. So the wavelength changes. When, when a wave goes from one medium to the next. So the wavelength either lengthens or shortens depending on what medium it's going, the wave is moving from. So in light waves, light appears to bend. So we can see here, we have a couple of examples over here on the right. So we have a, a light wave moving from air into this prism here and it bends here and then it bends here again when it leaves the prism. And then this is a very common sight, um, a pencil in a glass of water, and it looks like when it enters the water, the pencil is broken in half. So that is a very common uh, sight for refraction. So why does light refract? Why do any waves refract? So here we have an animation of light waves hitting a different medium. So we start with air. So we have air here, and then we change the medium that the waves are going through. And you can see as the waves hit the new medium, the first part of the wave to hit the medium changes its, its angle, the angle of refraction. And then the rest of the wave, as it continues to hit the medium, changes the wavelength. So you can see that the wave starts to turn, starts to bend, and then the rest of the wave has to hit the has to hit the, the new medium and it bends also. So if we draw wavelength, 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 and here's the new medium. So this part hits first and it bends. And then this part has to come in and bend next. So as the wave is hitting the medium, the the wave is bending in part at a time. So a little bit at a time. And so that's why the, the wave bends. So if light is incident on a, a, a different medium at a 90 degree angle, perpendicular to the boundary between the two media, the light doesn't refract. It just goes straight through. It has to be at an angle to refract. It has to be at an angle to change the the angle of refraction. All right, let's talk a little bit about Snell's law. So here's the equation for Snell's law. We have n sub i times sine of theta sub i equals n sub r times sine of theta sub r. So let's look at what all these things mean. So we have n sub i equals index of refraction for incident medium n sub r is the index of refraction for refractive medium. Theta sub i is the index, is the angle of incidence, and theta sub r is the angle of refraction. So the index of refraction is based on the medium itself. So air, for example, has an n of 1.0. So this is all determined experimentally. And the, me the medium itself determines the index of refraction. So, the, so for here, and we have this uh, diagram here. So the, if this were air and this were water, air has a certain index of refraction, which is 1.00. Water has another index of refraction. So it has an index of refraction that you would plug in to this equation. All right, let's look at a couple of examples. So using Snell's law, example one. So a ray of light travels through air, 
air has an index of refraction of one and approaching a boundary, the boundary with water, which has an index of refraction of 1.3333. The angle of incidence is 37.5 degrees. We want to know the angle of refraction. Okay, so we're going to plug this into our equation. So we have 1.00 times the sine of 37.5 degrees is equal to 1.333 times the sine of theta sub r. Okay, so we can do the math on the left side. So 1 times sine of 37.5 is 0 0.609, and that's equal to 1.333 times the sine of theta sub r. So to get sine of theta sub r by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 1.333. So we have 0 0.457 is equal to sine of theta sub r. Okay, so to get rid of the sine on the right side, we have to use what's called the inverse sine, or sometimes it's called the arc sine. So we're going to take the inverse sine of 0 0.457, and that's going to give us theta r. So taking the inverse sine, we get an angle of 27 0.2 degrees, and that gives us our angle of refraction. So 27.2 degrees gives us our angle of refraction. All right, let's look at example number two. So we have a, a ray of light travels from flint glass with an index of refraction, of reflection of 1.62 into ethanol with an index of reflection, refraction of 1.36. The angle of refraction in the ethanol is 23.7 degrees. What is the angle of incidence? Okay, so we're looking for angle of incidence. So we have light travels from flint glass. So that is our angle, that is our index of refraction for the incident light. So that is 1.62 times sine of theta i, and that's equal to 1.36 times sine of 23.7 degrees. So we have 1.62 times sine theta i is equal to, we'll do the math here, so 1.36 times sine of 23.7 is 0 0.547. Okay, now to get sine theta i by itself, we divide by 1.26, 1.62. So we have sine theta i is equal to 0 0.0, or excuse me, 0 0.337. Okay, and just like in the last problem, to figure out theta i, we have to take the inverse sine. So we have sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.337, and that is going to equal theta i. Okay, so our uh, angle of incidence is 19.7 degrees. Keep asking questions, everyone. It's how you learn new things.